The World's End. Five friends who reunite in an attempt to top their epic pub crawl from 20 years earlier unwittingly become humankind's only hope for survival. Starring Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Martin Freeman. Written by Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright, the team behind Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. And directed by Edgar Wright. Do you have a mini review for us, Bob? Yeah, here's what I think of the movie. The World's End. I gave you The World's End 3.5 out of 5. Starts strong with lots of witty banter zipping across the screen as five childhood friends reunite for an epic pub crawl. I was fine with the blue-blooded aliens plot driver, but somewhere about two-thirds in, the funny slowed and the silly but serious but silly plot took over. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, ready for mine? Yeah, let's hear what you have to say and see how closely we're, we're aligned or not. A step below the Sha- or Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Did I just not get the references? Can't... It can't quite figure out how serious and how much of a parody to be three stars. Mm, it sounds like we had some of the same concerns and it drove you a little more nuts than me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's right. So I'm really just going to come out and say it, Bob, but in case it wasn't clear, uh, I was disappointed in The World's End. I, uh, you know, I really enjoyed Shaun of the Dead, which you and I saw together here in New York, if I remember right. That's right, yeah. And uh, Hot Fuzz, I enjoyed that too. But the world's end never really found its groove. You know, it starts off as an almost serious. You you said there was witty banter. I guess there was witty banter, but it was sort of the stuff that I'm like I'm smiling but not laughing through most mm. of the first part of the movie. Um, you know, it's an almost serious look at how this guy hasn't changed even a little twenty years after high school. Uh, makes some amusing observations along the way, like you say. And uh, you know, for one, I like the scene when Gary played charmingly infuriating by Simon Pegg, is pulled over by a cop, and, uh, well, to try to describe it without ruining it for anyone who hasn't seen it, he, he gets out of a ticket with uh, what seems like only a joke at first, but then you hear a little bit more, and it turns out to be more than a joke. Um, <laughs> and, and moments like that, the movie showed how clever it could be. Yeah, I, I'm i surprised that you thought it was so serious at the beginning, because I, I thought, I mean, he the, the, it, the setup is he's going to each of his four buddies' places of work or, or where they are later in life. It's like, you know, 15, 20 years later, 20 years later. They're all like in their uh, early 40s, I guess, or late 30s. Uh, and uh, they're, they all seem to be pretty well established, and he's the same cool kid from the block, and he, he's just... He's just got a sharp wit about him, and he convinces all of his friends to come with him by telling them all that they all have already agreed, the ones that aren't there. <laughs> right. Well, you, got, you got so-and-so to come? Oh, well, okay. And then they all show up, and it's funny because he's late <laughs> <laughs> to their meetup, and he's like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm within an hour. And uh, it's just like a road trip movie at first, um, and the whole alien thing doesn't even start for like, 40 minutes or something. It's kind of funny. Yeah, a long time. I thought it took way too long for that to come. I started, like, I know sort of what the premise is about. I'm looking at my watch, like, really? Are we going to get to it or what? But uh, it was sort of funny, but I I guess I uh, identified with all of his friends having this annoying friend <laughs> instead of with him. <laughs> that is fair enough. I mean, I think I identified with him just because I wanted to. Like, yeah, have carefree dude, having a good time. We should all be like him. Wait, not really. That'd be bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I said, I was already checking my watch by the time we really got to the scene where we start to sniff the central premise, um, which I think we can say because it is part of the premise that the scene in the town, or that some of the people in the town have been replaced by... Uh, Robots, or they, you know, they make a big deal about how they don't like to be <laughs> called robots, but uh, right. but something like robots, right? That are planted there by, I suppose, aliens of some kind. I mean, aliens is it sounds like uh, monsters that are coming from invading from another planet, which is a little bit of that here, but it is about robots more. Th- you know, it's kind of combining a few different things and making fun of it all together, which I think is fine. But actually, that's part of the problem because. The more you learn, and we're not here to explain it because you'll learn it if you watch the movie, the more you learn about how this plot is coming together, the less you care. Like, at first you're like, oh, this is intriguing. How's this all come together? How's it the end of the world? Who are these aliens or robots? How does it... And then the more you learn, you're like, this is just silly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, all three of, of these movies have been a little bit silly in their premise. That's partly the point, right? Right, but... The other two, for being spoofs of the genres, uh, so Shaun of the Dead is is a zombie apocalypse spoof. Uh, it had a lot of heart, and so did Hot Fuzz, uh, being like a cop, a buddy cop spoof. Um, 
and and it felt more clever. And I guess that's also part of the problem is did you get the impression or was it just me that the world's end was like they ran out of ideas in terms of generating the spoof premise because it felt like Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz combined. There were a lot of like, you know, because Hot Fuzz has the town people who are uh, secretly uh, in cahoots with each other and this mm -hmm. has that. Hot, uh, and then Shaun of the Dead has the the end of the world. Uh, you know, it's zombies, not aliens or robots. And this has that. It's like they're like, oh, we did this and it was funny for two movies. Let's just combine those two themes and make it with blue blood, and it'll be totally new and nobody will notice. <laughs> I actually felt the same way that you're describing it, it. What what I kept thinking was, do I not know what kind of movie this is poofing? Like, is, have I not seen Revenge of the Body Snatchers or something like that? Is there something, some reference that I'm just not getting? And that's why I put that in my mini review because I felt the same thing. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like it knew what it was spoofing, or at least I didn't feel like I knew what it was spoofing. Uh, and things I, I had seen before. I kept having that thought, too. Yeah, and then uh, I guess we'll get to this, but toward the end, um, it felt to get even more serious for me, and it, there was a lot of, you know, because they're, they're on this epic pub crawl, and, and the whole point is, is as reuniting as friends, they're going to finish something they never, that, that they never were able to finish as uh, high school kids, um, buddies growing up, and... But then the whole alien thing takes over, but then they decide that they still should stick with the pub crawl plan because that way nobody will think that they're out of character or, you know, <laughs> they figured out that the town is half replaced or, or whatever. But then you get a lot of expose and, like, serious drama stuff between the two main leads, uh, you know, reopening wounds of childhood pain points of how they hurt each other and emotionally, and it gets, like... I don't know. And in, in the middle of all these like fight scenes, there's a lot of like carefully placed dialogue in that last pub that they're... Did, did you feel like it was a little too serious at, at points um, toward the end, especially after we have the blue-blooded robot slash aliens? <laughs> uh, well, I know what you're talking about, but I almost found myself wanting a little bit more of that because I didn't oh. <laughs> find it was as funny as I, as I was hoping. I mean, I... I don't know about you, but I just didn't laugh all that much, and neither did the rest of the theater. Uh, you know, I, sometimes you can be in a theater where lots of people are laughing, and you're the only one not laughing. At least that happens to me sometimes. Yeah. But this one seemed just to have very few moments where anyone laughed. Um, it, it, and then I don't know if this is exactly what you're talking about, but you know, when they sort of reach their their proximate pub call crawl goal, pub crawl goal. Yeah. Uh, like things change and like the bottom starts falling out and they go to this new phase that was a little unexpected and I just remember my my heart sinking like, oh great we got more to this movie <laughs> um, but I will say when <laughs> I actually ended up liking that scene one of my favorites in the uh, in the movie when Gary has to debate the network the head of the robots voiced by Bill Nye yeah. and uh, just but, but yeah I, I liked uh, seeing plucky Gary sticking up for humanity in a way that only Gary could ultimately. <laughs> no, I, I like that very specific scene too, but I agree with you that I felt like the movie was chunked into like three or four parts and it kept getting more and more layered and each layer felt um, that much more tedious. Like, ugh, really? Yeah. We're going to go that way? Okay. And then, you know, as soon as you think there's about to be a resolve, really? Oh, there's more? And then, you know, without getting into the ending, <laughs> I'll just say, to me, it just didn't work. It was like just back to silly over the top we're that we've come this far why don't we just like reopen a whole new thing to spoof with like a whole subtext fourth layer of craziness and it was just like too much too fast uh, I, I I don't know I I definitely like the first half of the movie more than the second half that one scene notwithstanding where he debates the, the, the network quote unquote <laughs> So I, I gotta say, my final take is probably uh, something that Ron Swanson said in the last season of Parks and Recreation: "Don't half-ass two things, whole ass one thing." That's my <laughs> advice. You know what? what I'm you? gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with you there. I, I don't think I can say it any better. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a good time. Uh, I'm a fan of Simon Pegg, so uh, there was a lot about it that that worked for me in the sense that I I missed um, a big budget movie from him. It, it's been a number of years. But and that's maybe that extra half star from me that you didn't give it. But uh, overall, it's um, it's definitely half assed. So take it or leave it. Maybe see it. Maybe don't. Depending on you know your your taste in these types of things. <laughs>